Have you wondered if you could take DSLR quality pictures on a dual lens iPhone like the 7 Plus, 8 Plus, and 10? Then stick with us, we're doing a review and a tutorial on the new Anamorphic app in the App Store. So as you can see, we're here in Nashville where people take photos for their album covers. Yeah. We're gonna use the iPhone to take some album covers. So to use this app properly, I need a subject, and so we're gonna use my camera guy, Bryant, here to do some tests. Let's check it out. All right, so first things first, you get your talent, your subject, your amazing friend, Bryant, to sit on a hill that looks like it's from Alice in Wonderland. Then you pull up your anamorphic app, open it up, and as you can see, the app is already starting to read the depth data from the dual cameras. In the bottom left corner, you can see what's going on. In fact, if you push the little red button icon, you can see like a heat sink map effect. It's really amazing. And so once you get your subject lined up properly, obviously click the photo, get your composition looking good, and it shows you what was captured using the 3D depth data. And so what's amazing with this app is that Apple's actually opened up the API for the dual lens technology stuff to be adjusted in post. And so this anamorphic app lets you do all sorts of cool adjustments with the blur. One of my favorite features about it is the blur not only looks like the round orbs that you get with a normal lens from like a 50 millimeter or something, it actually gives you the oval shaped bokeh effect that you can only get on like extremely expensive anamorphic glass. Oh, no. so the first thing I do is I adjust the depth. The goal is to get what you want in focus to be seen and visible and everything that you want to be blurred to have a red overlay on. The second thing that I do is I go into the depth map section and I basically adjust it so that the foreground is pretty much completely isolated, totally sharp and almost completely blacked out and the background is totally white. You can kind of go a little bit back and forth and that's something that you can kind of play with. Then I immediately go to the blur section and crank it all the way up just to see what happens. Just like I expected, this looks really cool. We are getting some weird blurs around the face and the arm. And so I go back to the depth and kind of adjust that and then back to the depth map and play with that a little bit, dial it down a little bit. And that's a lot better. And so now just by sliding a few things around, we get this gorgeous, looking image and I can't believe it's uh, iPhone. So the anamorphic mode is really great for taking pictures of people if you kind of fiddle with it and mess with it and especially if you apply a filter like from ViscoCam or Snapseed or Instagram. If you apply a filter to it, it really looks pretty authentic but you do get some weird kind of chromatic aberrations that the app is actually applying to the image. Like a red kind of outline as you can see from the picture I took of Bryant. So where this app really shines is when you're taking pictures of inanimate objects. Maybe you sell stuff on eBay and you're taking pictures of shoes and fidget spin and all sorts of different things like silly putty and different types of chalk. Um, maybe you work at Foot Locker, you're one of the people on the PR team. Having something that's in your pocket at all times that takes photos as good as a real DSLR is a huge advantage. So let's try this out with this beautiful landscape here in Nashville. Let's see how we can make this look cool. We've got some leaves, a nice sunset kind of going on in the backdrop. So let's open up the anamorphic app again and take a really nice photo that I would want to use on Instagram. Again, you can see the uh, depth map that's going on in the bottom corner of the image. Use that depth mapping as you're framing it up to make sure that it's actually working. Click use photo. Again, always start with the depth slider. And so I'm gonna isolate the leaves here, make sure that they're all in the frame, and boom, that looks really nice. For this type of image, it works really well because those imperfections that you see when you're taking a portrait kind of blur into the inanimate objects. So we've got Bryant here, and uh, we're gonna try out the built-in portrait mode. So as you can see, it's tracking perfectly, and you're getting a nice blur behind him. And what's really cool about using the built-in app is that once you take the photo, you can actually go back and edit it as if it were completely non-destructive. So you get all the same features that you would with the anamorphic app. However, you can also see if the Apple blur is better. If you're taking a landscape photo, like I would of this amazing iconic scene of downtown Nashville with the portrait mode and with the anamorphic app, it's just gonna look like a normal picture. There's no depth there to blur with. So 
Just stick to the normal lens. All these features are great on the 7 Plus, and they're gonna be great on the 8 Plus as well. Portrait mode, check it out. What's up? Dude, it looks so good. It does look kind of good. Oh, wow. What really excites me most about this technology is when I get the iPhone 10 or the X. I refuse to call it the 10, it's an X. The portrait lens on the iPhone 10 has optical image stabilization, which is gonna be a huge deal. It also has a faster aperture, and so you're gonna also naturally just get a better blur because the aperture is faster. Also on top of that, because the top part where the notches on the iPhone 10 has all those sensors and stuff, you can actually do the portrait mode effect with the selfie camera as well. So imagine doing an anamorphic app effect with the selfie camera. It's gonna be really cool. And when we get an iPhone 10, we will definitely test that. Another way to get great portraits is to climb up on things illegally and fall and break your neck. Welcome to Nashville, where people come from all over to do this. So as you can see, taking pictures of animals in particular really works well with this. Gotta love Nashville, lots of great music here. This image of this musician that I just took is pretty good and it looks awesome, but as you can see, if there's not a really distinct contrast between the edge and the backdrop, that's really where you see this thing start to fail a little bit. Dude, it looks so cool with them flying like crazy behind you. So to kind of round up our whole adventure with the uh, iPhone portrait mode, I'll say this, this thing does not replace your DSLR. I know we're getting super close and the image comparison is honestly pretty dang close. In fact, I would say that it almost looks better because you can get some really crazy bokeh effects with the anamorphic app. However, it's really iffy and hit or miss. You really don't know what you're gonna get when you take a picture with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm trying to figure out what exactly it is that makes things work and what doesn't keeps kind of going back and forth, kind of like these birds that are migrating south for the winter. In general, I would say to get the best images out of portrait mode, use the built-in portrait app on your phone. Sometimes the algorithm that Apple does is actually better than what the anamorphic app is doing. Look at it, see if it looks good. If you want more blur and you want to play around with it later, then pull it into the anamorphic app and start messing with the sliders and experimenting with it. The best results that I've found with it have been with animals and inanimate objects. People work, but I'd say it's about a good like 60% of the time it works. So the anamorphic app is only $2.99 in the app store, but I've actually reached out to James, the developer of this app, and asked him if he would like to sponsor this video. What James has done is awesome. He's actually given me five free download codes. If you wanna download this app for free, subscribe to the Kinetika channel and put a comment on this video. The first five people who subscribe and comment on this video, I will reach out to and give them a promo code and they will be able to download this app for free. If you like this video, let us know below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because we are making a lot of content for you guys and we don't want you to miss it. See you next time.